a green thumb? Is green thumb even a thing? So typically when we hear the term green thumb, we naturally think of somebody who can grow plants with little to no effort. It's like they're born with this natural ability to grow a lush garden. Is that something that people are born with? Or is it something you can learn? Allow me to show you some basic skills of observation that will help you develop your plant intuition, and I'll let you be the judge. So the key thing to being a natural at growing plants isn't necessarily inherited. Granted, there are probably some people who have a skill that don't have to think about it, it just comes to them, but really what comes to them is all about their observation skills. When you understand basic plant anatomy, it's very easy for you to determine what a plant needs. If it's requiring more bright light or if it's something that needs a more shaded or indirect light, a lot of times we can tell just by looking at the leaves. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of this isn't 100% accurate and there are tons of exceptions to the rules. And you really do want to take that into consideration. But there are a lot of things that you can just naturally determine just by looking at a plant. And I'm gonna go over a couple of those basics right now. So just by looking at a plant, you can often determine what its lighting needs are. We do know that plants carry chlorophyll in their leaves in order to photosynthesize. But the color of the leaves can also determine how much chlorophyll is in that leaf. And that may determine how much light it needs as well. When you look at the difference of like a neon pothos, for example, being that the leaves are lighter in color, it might need more light than a pothos that has a darker green color to them. Now you might also want to take into consideration the surface area of the leaves. A thinner leafed variety like this Dracaena might require more sunlight than the wider, broader leaves of this Maranta. Because of the surface area, you obviously would need more light in order for it to produce more energy. Now what about the plants that are different colors? You have Oxalis triangularis that come out where the leaves are completely purple. Those typically would need more sun as well. When you think of the fact that the chlorophyll is being hidden by all these other color pigments. And then when a plant has a lack of chlorophyll, when it has either variegations or different colors in the leaves, that that plant might require more light as well. Now, not all the time can those plants tolerate full sun. A lot of times they just need brighter light and indirect light because with the lack of chlorophyll, there's a higher chance for scorching. Now let's talk a little bit about watering needs for a plant. Oftentimes plants that are succulent in nature, they love to be thoroughly watered, but they often need draining because the leaves hold water in them. Feel the leaves on this plant, for example, this is a Senecio microglossus. The leaves are very thick and they retain water. So you may water very thoroughly the first time, but you're going to leave a long period of time in between waterings in order for the plant to spend the water that it's holding within the leaves. A variety that has a thinner leaf, like again, this parlor palm, because there is very little retaining water value of this plant, you would need to water this more frequently. Now, also when it comes to determining watering needs, on this Dracaena, for example, you have very thick trunks or stems which the leaves protrude. These are also very water retaining. So this might hold more water than again. I'll also use the parlor palm as an example because these have very thin trunks or stems. They have less water to retain. Now when it comes to watering, the other thing is the appearance of the roots. Some roots are very thick and bulbous and can retain a lot of water as well. A classic example is the ZZ plant where it's growing from a rhizome that comes up out of the root system. Now these are very thick pieces of plant tissue that are holding water and sustaining the nutrient source for the plant. So typically these plants, you don't need to water quite as often. Now you might find a root system that are very fibrous and spread around, very finger-like or feather-like. Now these roots don't retain that much moisture, so they would require a more moist soil or more frequent water. Now with all 
plants, you always want to kind of balance the lighting and watering needs. Obviously, the more light a plant gets, it dries out faster, it's working harder, it needs more water. So there's always a payoff between the two. Now you also might notice some plants tend to be very hardy and thick and very wax-like. These plants typically will require a little less attention. They're made to withstand a lot of weather conditions or harsh weather conditions and therefore wouldn't need a lot of attention. That's why snake plants tend to be really great plants for beginners because you can ignore it and it will still be fine. Looking at a plant, if you notice that it is a very succulent-like nature, it has a lot of crevices and hiding areas for the pests to reside, you might want to pay a little extra attention to those things because those plants most likely are more prone to pests. So it's apparent that your powers of observation are key into really understanding how to take care of your plants. So looking at your plant size, leaves, the stem, that can all determine a lot of the different factors. Because even though those plants might come with a care tag, those care tags can be very vague. Or they might give you instructions that completely contradict what you research. So how do you determine the actual care for your plant? And that's all about just taking the time to research, to observe, and a little trial and error too. We've all killed plants. Now having a green thumb, that just comes with practice. But even if you think you don't have a green thumb, it doesn't mean that you can't learn. You might be new to the plant game, you might just be learning to take care of some of your plants. And as you grow more and more varieties and you learn each plant individually, you'll understand basic telltale signs and cues that your plant might tell you to help you understand the care that it wants. Obviously, these are just general ideas and you should research every plant. But everything is trial and error, so don't be afraid to try something and if it doesn't work, change it. It's all about observing your plant and what it's telling you. Anyways, thanks again. I'll see you soon. Bye.